Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. Today we have some amazing stories such as some new advancements at Facebook in their research division that will help reduce that screen door effect and it's really interesting. We've also got some Quest competitors potentially coming out and a company that is really driven to help other companies create these standalone headsets which I think is a really great thing to see. We've got new games and some nice little stories as well so let's get started. So let's start this off with some new games, starting with Hollow Fit, a new game that just released on the Oculus Quest on the 7th of January that aims to make fitness fun. And it's a great start for the new year as lots of people just got virtual reality devices and have new year resolutions to be better. Perhaps it's a perfect time to try it out. It boasts over 100 workout customizations with promise of more to come in future updates. You can run, you can cycle, and you can row in 11 different environments. But there is a catch, it's a subscription service. But it has a seven day free trial, so you might as well try that out free for seven days. But subscriptions, I just can't get along with. After Supernatural, they've got some major backlash from the community. I'm really surprised to see another on this platform. But the title can connect to your exercise devices as well, such as a bike, a rower, and an elliptical. So if you are keen in your virtual reality fitness and you don't mind paying up for a subscription and you've got some of those devices, might as well check it out. So the next game is Mare, a surprise pop-up on the Oculus Quest coming soon section of the store and it's now just released. And it's a third person godlike view adventure game where you help a little girl through various different environments and creepy dungeons as you try to solve various puzzles and enjoy exploration around these stunning environments. And you're helped to do this with an inanimate object which seems to be a bird. And wow, the graphical fidelity on the Oculus Quest for this game, they've done a stunning job this is very creative but it is a slower paced game that you can play sitting down and just enjoy the world that's before you watch it come alive i do enjoy games like this sometimes i want to play virtual reality late at night i can't be screaming at people in population one and i just want to relax and it's the perfect game for that so let's move on to a nice juicy story now so 2021 is here and that means although it's going to be in a digital format CES 2021 is right around the corner and it's going to bring us lots of new virtual reality content and it's showing us what the future may hold for us in this industry and it's rather exciting and I want to share some of them with you. So the first of which is a headset called Nolo which is a standalone device and it's their debut standalone system that has 60 OF and inside out tracking which is always a concern for me because other companies have tried this inside out tracking and they just haven't been as successful as Oculus at implementing it. So this headset is actually an ODM as well, which means original design manufacturer. So I believe they have an intention to provide this headset and this device to other companies wanting to get into the virtual reality space and can just slap their own branding on it. So far, there's no specs on the screen resolution or the battery life, but they have stated that ODM caters for customizations that brands or other companies may want to do to make the device unique to them or to meet some guidelines to match their brand. The controllers also look like an Oculus Touch controller. Hopefully there's no design patent lawsuit coming their way for this one. So I kind of like this. This is a company creating a headset to give to other companies so they can experiment and create their own devices that are going to be 6DOF standalone devices, not 3DOF like the Oculus Go, which we do seem to see a lot of, or mobile phone insert ones. So I think this is kind of a good idea I don't see this surpassing stuff like Oculus or Vive in the standalone space because this is a device that's going to be used for companies perhaps for training and not specifically focused on the consumer market, but time will tell. So the next headset, which I think perhaps is even more interesting, is this nice cheeky picture that I saw on Twitter of a socially distant conference room with a presentation on that contained a virtual reality device on the screen that looked exactly, near enough exactly like a Quest 1 with an elite battery strap on it. But this is a headset from MoVision and we see some potential specs on screen as well, which sounds almost too good to be true. I'm sorry to be skeptical, but for the past year, we've been excited for new devices and they've just not turned out exactly the way we want them to be. So I'm being realistic. So some speculation now because I can't read Chinese, but it looks like this headset is supposed to have a Qualcomm XR2 chip, eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. It's also to have six DOF inside out tracking with the use of four cameras. And I think 96 degrees FOV, I think that's what this is. And 2160 by 2160 dual LCD screens. And that is some crazy high resolution. 
More to be revealed when these events actually take place and these presentations occur actually at CES when it's finally on. But this has definitely piqued my interest to see what's going to be shown, what's going to be occurring. And I like the fact that there is a company giving other companies opportunities to compete with their ODM. And also to see a competitor quest, hopefully a competitor quest, but I don't see it doing so well because it's a Chinese device and seeing that being popularized in America after the complete madness that they've had with Chinese devices in the past, I don't see it being a success, but it definitely piques my interest. I still want to see what's going to happen in this space. If you want to see a really great video on this, because as I was making this video, I saw that Tyrell Woods posted a video on this topic specifically, just this topic for about seven minutes and goes into really great detail. I'll leave a link down below so you guys can check that out and get more information on this. Next is a game update for the biggest first person shooter in the virtual reality space, Pavlov. It's got a huge free update for the PC VR version. Unfortunately, not on the quest yet. My fingers are crossed, I hope it is going to come. So on Steam, you can now enjoy some World War II inspired content as this update brings World War II characters, old school weaponry from Germany, Britain, the USA, the USSR, with a total of 18 different guns, six new grenades, and even rocket launchers. And there's also new maps, but the most shocking and interesting thing to me about this update, it has tanks. So you can now play games inside of tanks in virtual reality. As I said, this is a free update, it's not DLC. And in this tank mode, there are three positions for you to control. There's the driver, the gunner, and the commander. So in a team, you're really going to have to work together to operate this tank to win each game, bringing true teamwork to the online multiplayer platform. This game is currently 40% off as well for the next couple of days till the 11th of January. So I'd grab this cheap while you can, because I feel like this is actually a game changer. It's completely changed the game entirely. Previously, it was just a first person shooter like Call of Duty, and now it's like a VR version of World of Tanks. Perhaps my favorite story on this list now, Facebook's research division, they seem to be the most active in finding advancements in the virtual reality space, or they're the ones at least telling the world about it. So they've been experimenting with a mechanical display that can shift to reduce the screen door effect. The screen door effect is the mesh that you may see when looking through virtual reality displays as it highlights the space between each of the pixels that are unlit. So the shifting of the display works by rapidly moving the display ever so slightly to reduce the appearance of these gaps between those pixels. An interesting idea and perhaps it has some merit to it if Facebook are going down this avenue because my first thought was if the screen is shaking does it look like it's vibrating in front of me and why are they not just going to use a higher pixel density screen but to keep costs low sometimes that's not possible. So say you have a high resolution display with an 80 degree FOV that's going to look great but it has a low FOV. If we then stretch that high resolution display to a higher FOV like 130, 150, that display is going to show more clearly those gaps between each of those pixels because it contains the same amount of pixels, but it's got a larger display. And having a high resolution display with a higher FOV is going to be extremely expensive for the consumer. And I just had a thought, maybe we won't see it vibrating because if it's really fast and the vibration is small enough, it will work like light bulbs because light bulbs look like they're on all of the time, but they're actually flickering rather rapidly. So Oculus again, finding ways to reduce the cost of virtual reality and improve the experience. There is enough information on this topic for you to go really, really in depth. I could do an entire like 20 minute video on this topic because there's so much here talking about methods of implementation, some experiments that they've been doing, and it's very, very long. So if you're interested in this read, because it is good, I will leave a link down below in the description for you to check it out, and I do recommend it. So let's talk about probably the most anticipated game this month, and I'm so excited, and that is Hitman. Hitman got a virtual reality trailer showing off some virtual reality gameplay, of course, and my goodness, is it something special and something to get excited about. If we're going to have the new PlayStation 5 hardware as well to give it an extra boost of power, I can't wait to play this. So this gameplay trailer showed a variety of different gameplay, worldly interactions, different environments, such as you were walking into a kitchen and you picked up a knife for your assassination, or you were shooting guards, bodyguards, round corners to try and take out your target. And all the different environments that you were in looked so stunning, very bright, very detailed, abundant with foliage or people. So it looks like this game is going to be really immersive as well. But one thing I noticed is you're always using your right hand. So I'm not confident of free arm movement with the left and right hand. I am hoping for aim controller support because of this, because that seems possible. And I cannot wait to try this with the DualSense controller. Those incredible haptics are going to feel so good because this game is going to support the DualSense controller as well. And if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, 
Hitman is coming to virtual reality because they are doing a World of Assassination edition, which is Hitman 1, 2, and 3, bringing a nice update that's going to provide virtual reality support for each of these games, providing you with over 20 missions to enjoy. And they are a great series of games, so I'm really, really excited. It's kind of a shame, though, that it's going to be on the PSVR and not on PC. Oh, and by the way, I do have a nice cheeky video coming soon because the legends Mr. Bummerza and Dr. Beef have given me access to Doom 3, their port to the Oculus Quest system to try out and show you guys. So please stick around for that. So that's it from me today, guys. Thanks for watching to the end of the video, getting caught up on the latest and greatest in the virtual reality space. Lots of fun little pieces of information at the start of this year to get excited to see what 2021 is going to bring us. So please subscribe to the channel. Thanks to my patrons, you absolute legends. And remember... Happy gaming, guys. Good day.